What's up, guys, and welcome back to another episode of Bourbon of the Week. This week, we have a special one. This is out of Las Vegas, Nevada, in our brand new Bourbon of the Week glass that we're going to do. So everybody knows before we get started, time for the traditional sip. Ooh, smooth. So what's up guys, my name's Chris, I'm with Bourbon of the Week. I'm gonna pour up a little bit more here because we didn't quite get enough on the first pour. But this is Smoke Wagon, this comes out of Las Vegas, Nevada. It's actually a source product from MGP. We do a lot of source products on here and a lot of them, well, they taste like source products. Either they're not old enough or they're not blended well enough together. Basically, everybody's trying to put out a bourbon, they're trying to do it quickly and they're trying to do it profitably. This one, on the other hand, gets a lot of good reviews so I figured it's finally time we put it to the test. This comes in at 60% corn, 36% rye, I think it is, which leaves us with 4% malted barley. So I'm expecting a high rye spice, which on my first sip here, I didn't really get. Now everybody knows we do three categories here, price, taste, drinkability. We leave price for last just because I want to know if the drinkability and the taste determine the price. So as for that, let's get started with this. On drinkability alone, now this is a 92, I think, 92.5 proof, which, you know, it's not too bad. It's a little bit higher proof, but it's nothing crazy, especially compared to what we've been drinking recently. This one is not too bad at a 92.5 proof. And I can tell you right off the bat, the drinkability is really good. From that first traditional sip, it's very smooth, very easy to drink. You're pushing almost 95 to 100 proof, but yet you're still not really in that range that you should expect too much of a kick from this. But this is a very solid pour, especially with that 36% rye. I thought there would be more of a Kentucky hug, but that low proof high rye is my favorite combination when it comes to a mash bill. You give me a low proof high rye, I'm gonna drink it all day of the week, especially if they can balance the rest of the flavors out well. And we'll get to that and taste on this, but I can tell you a little hint, it does very well at that as well. So for this, Drinkability, I'm going to give it a really good score on drinkability. I don't want to give it too great of a score because I don't think that, you know, some of the higher proofs definitely sip well. This being a lower proof in that 90 proof range, 92.5, I don't think it deserves the best score, but I can't knock it because it definitely doesn't drink above its proof at by any means. So for this, I'm going to give this like a, let's give it like an 8.9 when it comes to drinkability because I don't think it deserves to be quite in the nines yet. If this was like 100 and 110 proof, I think we could get up there, but for this, let's give it an 8.9. So that's gonna bring us over to taste on this, and I can tell you right now that this is a very well-balanced, very well-put-together bottle of bourbon. The sourced products usually have a very good taste profile just because they're getting it from MGP, so you know that they're getting a good product. The question is, are they gonna be able to blend it themselves? They do a very good job here blending this. I think the one thing that I like about it is it does have a little bit of an oak kick, but it's not overwhelming. It has a little bit of sweetness on the front and then it really opens up to that rye spice. As far as these flavors go though, let me try and pick out a few for you because I have been using a nosing kit. We started a new series on here where I'm trying to nose my bourbons and really pull out some of these flavor profiles that I wasn't really capable of pulling out before. So what I actually did for this episode is I had a drink or two of this before we started the episode just to kind of get my flavor profiles there going and see what I could pick out. As for this one, right off the bat, I get vanilla and caramel on the front. And interestingly enough, toffee. So the only reason I know about toffee, Russell's Reserve Single Barrel is famous for the toffee flavor. And when I drank that, and then I drank this, I got that same type of flavor profile. So there's definitely a toffee, vanilla, caramely sweetness that this starts out with right away. You can even get it on the nose. I thought when I was going to smell this that it was going to be straight baking spices, straight pepper, all that with that 36% rye. But this has a very good sweet note at the beginning of it, which really balances this out nicely. Then it goes into a mild, very, very mild oak flavor. Non-chill filtered bottle here. They do one thing where they don't roll the barrels, so they actually put on their website, they put the barrels up high, which means it's hotter up at the top, which allows the wood to expand more and move about more, which is gonna give you more of those woody, oaky flavor profiles, which you can get very slightly on this, but at the same time, it then dissipates very quickly, which I actually like. I don't like a very good oaky flavor. And then it opens up straight into that rye spice, which I thought would linger a little bit more. But the, the mouth feels good, but it definitely isn't a long, it doesn't last very long on the palate. Once you drink this, you kind of want to have another one, you kind of want to have another one. I think that's the youngness in it that's really bringing that out. But being a non-chilled filtered, it definitely is, apparently has more flavor profiles than if they would, if they would chill filter it. 
But for this one, I absolutely love everything that this has to offer flavor-wise. I think it does taste a little bit young. I don't think, I think this is not age stated from what I read. It does taste a little bit young, but as for a sourced bourbon, you know you're getting a good product from MGP and you know that they can blend this well because quite frankly, it's delicious. So as for taste, I'm gonna give this, I'm gonna give it like an 8.5 when it comes to taste on this. So last but not least, we have price on this. And I always have a conundrum when it comes to a bottle like this because quite frankly, I don't know if I should go with MSRP or the price that I paid. Traditionally speaking, I'd do the price that I paid because I think that's the fairest way to value this bottle. What I paid for it, would I pay for it again, and what is the MSRP, we'll mention as well. MSRP is $30 on this. I had to end up paying $40 on this. I had to go across state lines, couldn't get it here in Pennsylvania. So of course, across the border, it was a couple more dollars. Not too much more, which doesn't make me too upset, but we're gonna talk about a $40 price tag on this when we're doing my scale. $40 isn't too tough of an ask, but at the same time, I like it a lot better at that $30 range. $40 gets into those bottles, you know, a little bit higher than the Elijah Craig's, the Four Roses Small Batch, where I think this competes very nicely. At $40, I'm gonna give this like a 7.9. I think they have a little bit of wiggle room, but if they're putting it out at $30, they're doing exactly what they should be doing. Unfortunately, there's just stores out there that are charging more for it because we can't get it over here on the East Coast that easily. So for $40, I'm going to give this a 7.9, but I will tell you what, at $30, this is an absolute buy every day of the week. This competes with the Elijah Craig small batches, the Four Roses small batch. Another very, very good source bourbon that we've already done on this, Penelope. I think it's right up there. I think Penelope, we're about to find out. I didn't add it up quite yet. They're gonna be very close though, I think. And I think that's exactly where this bottle deserves to be. It's a very good bottle if you can get your hands on it. They have another expression called Uncut Unfiltered that I would love to try. Hopefully I can get my hands on that as well. But in the meantime, let's send it over to this week's Bourbon Bomb of the Week because we always like to learn something on the channel. Cheers. So for this week's Bourbon Bomb of the Week, we're going to go over this logo here, and more specifically the saying on it, which is Bibimus Morendum Est. Now this roughly translates to English as drink, for we shall die. Now if that's not a reason to drink, I don't know what is, but where does it come from? This comes from a gentleman named Seneca the Younger, who was in 41 AD, exiled from Rome. He was brought back in 49 AD because Nero wanted him to be his tutor. Nero ended up becoming the emperor in 54 AD, and then there was this conspiracy to kill Nero, and Nero actually thought that Seneca... You know, he might not have been involved in it, but at the same time, he turned a blind eye, so he was told to take his own life, only to later be found out that he probably didn't have anything to do with it. Now, I don't know when he said this along that trail, but I like to think they gave him one last glass of wine before, and he said, Dibimus Morendo Mest. Drink, for we shall die. That's your Bourbon Bomb of the Week, and if that's not a reason to pour up tonight, I don't know what is. Cheers, y'all. So next time you're wondering if you should have a drink or not tonight, just remember, Bibimus Morandum Est, drink for we shall die. As for the smoke wagon though, this is going to get an 8.43 on our scale, which is a pretty good score if you ask me, especially for a sourced bourbon. Not a lot of them can get up there on that scale. So this is going to put it in either the top 10, top 15, something like that, right up near the top of the list though. But as for the smoke wagon, fantastic bottle. If you're able to pick up a bottle of this, especially for under $40, if you can get this at MSRP, grab it every day of the week. Also, I'm looking for the uncut, unfiltered, so if anybody knows where it is over here on the East Coast, let me know so I can grab a bottle of that as well. But in the meantime, please don't drink and drive. Drink responsibly. Hit that subscribe button because we're really pushing that 500, and we are really trying to get to 1,000. So hit that subscribe button down below. And follow me on Instagram because every week at 4 o'clock on Tuesday, I drop an image of the bourbon that we're going to review. You can try to guess the score that I'm going to give it, and if you guess the closest, you'll get a shout-out on the channel as well as entered in a monthly drawing where maybe you can win a custom bourbon of the week glass. So that's what we have for you this week. Drink responsibly, don't drink and drive. Stay healthy, stay happy, and stay drinking. Bibimus Morendo Mest. Cheers, y'all.